All right, so I have a couple relatively old ThinkPad laptops. These had been uh, discarded. So there, there was actually, actually, this one has a sticker still stuck to it. I haven't completely cleaned that off yet. The one on the bottom here. So I have two of these. And uh, the one on the top, I actually cleaned this off with alcohol and scrubbed it up and everything. But um, yeah, so this is, a, it's, it's old. It's old enough that it's like barely, you know, it's not worth using almost. But it's a, it's a Lenovo R61, and it's not like it's useless, but um, yeah, these two were in the garbage, basically. There was a stack of 17 of these that had been discarded, so um, I took two of them. Apparently, they're going for somewhere between like $30 to $50 on eBay, I think, depending on condition and stuff. Now, um, <clears throat> these, two, um, these two each have... Um, I powered these on, and they're, I, they actually didn't have, a, I didn't have a power supply for them, so I bought one on eBay for like probably 10 bucks or something just to try them out. Um, it, so I mean, they, they could be sold, but it's not really worth the effort unless I was doing it in bulk, and I, I, even still. But um, yeah, so it, not really worth it for me to sell these, and they're, they're old enough that I have so many spare laptops and things around, they're not really worth using. So. Um, any case, they're, they're, they, they might be fun to play with and to test out. I, I might take them apart, I might see what I can install on them. I'm thinking I want to install NetBSD on one of them and probably like Kali Linux on the other, just to see how it runs. I mean, really I'd like, like a better laptop to run Kali, just to you know run tests on my home network, see how secure things are. But um, I was also thinking maybe I'd just test Arch out on one of them too, but re really, um, I, I want to try a Kali and Net, NetBSD, so that that's what they're going to be used for. Right now, they both they're both running um, <clears throat> Windows 7, and they both boot directly into the admin account. Um, this is how I found them. They're running a registered copy of Windows 7 that boots directly into the admin account. Now, um, if you they each have um, a gig and a half of RAM, and they each have Celeron processors. I'm not sure. Any, any more of the details about the processor besides that. And they each have a dead battery, which means they're worth even less. So I can power each of them on, they don't charge, and um, I'm not sure if that can be fixed or I just have to replace the battery, but I'm not gonna do that because it's just not worth putting money into getting these running. But I was initially thinking it might be worth adding an SSD into each of these and have just using them as low, low powered testing machines or something. But I don't think it's worth putting an SSD in these because the, I mean the RAM is so so low and the the CPUs are just you know so so weak that I, I don't think it, I, I'm not even going to try to make them be quick efficient machines. I'm just going to keep them as they are. Um, so that said, I'm not going to do anything. I might take them apart just to take them apart, but I'm not going to try to upgrade the hardware in them. But what I am going to do is. Um, I'm gonna probably, yeah, I'm just gonna install Linux and NetBSD on them and just, just see how it works. So the, it'll be a fun little side project, but um, that's about it. Um, that's all I had in mind for these two things. <clears throat> um, yeah, just, just a fun little side project. I know this isn't as exciting as um, some of my Raspberry Pi projects or some of my coding projects, but um, yeah, that's, this is pretty much it. This is like where the this is uh, you could unscrew this and pull pull this tray out and the hard drive is right in here So I imagine it would be pretty easy to just swap it for an SSD and uh, the battery is in the back here like this um, you, you can just slide that out and it's it is dead for sh probably dead. I don't know it doesn't hold the charge anyways um, Yeah, anyway, whatever So you could use them plugged in unless I bought a new battery and even then, I don't know how good it's. I, I can't imagine you get a new battery for them. It may be good. Um, yeah. Anyways, old uh, Windows Vista license for business on it on the back. Um, yeah. Anyways, I, I like I like how these have. Um, I, I I like the lights on these, and um, like like it tells you if it's charging and and. And if it's in sleep mode and stuff, which is kind of neat. I like the solid, stable build of this. It still feels like it has a solid build. It's a relatively, the keyboard is all right. It doesn't feel amazing, but it's better than some laptops for sure. And I guess it still kind of feels, um, 
I don't know. I, I guess lately I've been using my mechanical keyboard. And I've gotten used to, so I'm usually, I'm switching between like this mechanical keyboard and uh, a MacBook Pro, which is flat, but I've gotten used to it. And it's, the MacBook Pro is actually pretty amazing once you get used to it, even though it's flat. It's like the newer MacBook Pro and it actually works pretty well, um, be better than I would think. I, I never would have thought that would be even remotely okay, but it's not bad actually. I actually kind of like it. Um, it's it's the, the 2019 MacBook Pro. But um, yeah, anyways, um, I mean, this keyboard's not terrible. Definitely beats some some laptops. Um, I, I, I think the even, the, the older models of these had even better keyboards, like what, much better than this. They were actually, the keys really stood out and really were really, really nice. Um, one thing that gets me with this is there's, there's no trackpad on these. Um, which is frustrating. I know a lot of people love these and say once they've discovered the this this little you know this little red um, mouse thing here, whatever you would call this, people say that's like the most amazing thing and it, it makes them so much more efficient. I tried it a little bit. I, maybe I just need to get used to it, but it seems terrible. I, I don't know, just just my opinion, but um, maybe it's just that I need to get used to it. You see, you have more indicator lights up here on the front, um, which is kind of nice. Um, each, each, one of these has an 80 gig hard drive and the other has a 120 gig hard drive. Um, but yeah, that's, so that's about it. Um, so I'm gonna cut out and I'm gonna come back after I've tried to install an OS on each of these. All right, so this is an old ThinkPad that was literally pulled out of the garbage or you know, it was sitting next to the garbage in a pile of 17 laptops. Now, um, this guy is going to be running Kali Linux. I'm going to be installing Kali off of this disk here. Um, well, at the same time, my Acer, which I, I got this, I think, from Newegg. Um, my Acer is going to be installing Windows and then Ubuntu. I'm going to dual boot it. And uh, my ThinkPad over here is just going to run Kali, hopefully. I'm going to see how it, it runs, but this is an ancient box. It has a Celeron processor and a gig and a half of RAM, which should be enough, but it's going to be relatively slow and weak. Um, the battery on this will not hold a charge. See how it's plugged in. You can see it has power from the from the adapter, but the battery just will not charge. Um, it's currently running a registered copies of Windows 7 that I found it with. Um, so it's a Lenovo ThinkPad R61. They go for about thirty to fifty dollars on eBay. And uh, yeah, sorry about the background noise in this video, but it's what I have to work with today. And um, yeah, so let's get this started. I'm gonna see if I can install Kali on this. I'm probably not in, I'm not gonna record the, the full install. I'll, I'll do that in a separate video, but I'm just gonna show you the results and how it ended up working out on this laptop. And if you wanna see how to install Kali, I'm gonna do that in a VM on a separate video because I, I just, it's not a good time to be recording a full install today. But yeah, so we're gonna have Windows and Ubuntu on my nice Acer here. And uh, I'm gonna install Kali on this ancient ThinkPad. Now, um, the Acer is not exactly a powerhouse, but um, it's, it's a, you know, mid-range and it's a couple years old. Um, you know, I, I bought it new, but um, and it had a, it had an i5 in it at the time, and it, which it still does, and um, obviously, and uh, yeah, so this guy is really old. I found it like a few days ago, and um, yeah, it's an old piece of junk that I'm just using as a toy. So th this guy is for getting real work done, and this guy is as a toy. Um, this is like my laptop I use when I don't use my small Asus laptop or my MacBook Pro. So yeah, let's get started. Alright, so um, I can't get this uh, Lenovo laptop booted off of my USB drive here. And the reason for that is because we, we can see the boot order on the... We can see it can boot off the LAN, which we could try, but I'm not going to set up a server for that. And we can see it can boot off of the hard disk, but excluded is... My USB drive is excluded and we can't add it because I'm not logged in as an administrator to the BIOS. So I, I guess it's like a read-only mode. I've never actually seen this. I guess because I've never entered the BIOS on a ThinkPad before. But um, yeah, so I don't have the password. So I'm either going to have to pull the CMOS battery after, by disassembling this or I'm going to try to reset the password to the pin. So I'll, get, I'll try the reset first. All right, so in order to remove the CMOS battery and reset the BIOS password, I decided to, so I, I had to open up the this laptop. And um, to do that, I had to remove a ton of screws. I've already done that and I didn't record it because it took me a while. There's a ton of the screws on the back here and I set them all up here. Um, 
you'll see it. Yeah, you can kind of see that with the lighting. All right, so I put all the screws in the right places. You'll notice they're all different sizes. So I organize them based on where they go on the back of the, the laptop. So that's kind of a huge pain. But you know, if you if you decide to do the same thing with the same model laptop, uh, or any laptop, just keep track of which screw goes where because they're all different sizes and it's a huge pain. But I took all of these screws out of the back of this laptop. And so I had thought this back would come off, but um, after taking the screws out and opening the laptop, you'll see the keyboard just falls right out. So the keyboard itself falls out and this little pad, this little pad here fall, comes right off after all those screws are out and the keyboard just falls out like this. So this is the laptop here, right? And um, inside you can see, um, you can see the RAM right here. And um, you can see this yellow thing here is the CMOS battery. So I just have to disconnect that and that should, um, that should reset the password for me. Um, I'm gonna try doing that. I'm gonna try just plugging and unplugging it and see if that works. And if, if that doesn't work, I'm gonna unplug it and just leave it unplugged for like an hour, which is what you know every instruction that I've read, or what the only instruction I read tells me to do. Um, looking down here, um, not sure what part that is. That looks like the, this is a wireless card down here, in here. Um, I, I, I almost wanted to say that was a uh, an SSD, but um, it looks like an M2 port. I'd have to get a closer look, but um, it must be something else because I think this is too old to have an M M2 port. I could be wrong. Um, and I believe the CPU has to be like this. I'm guessing this is where the CPU is, but I'm not sure how this is all laid out. And I'm not going to take this apart any more than I need to. So um, I'm going to give it a shot. So if you see the CMOS battery here, I have to unplug this little thing here and plug it back in and see if that works. And here we go. So unplug this, um, black on the left side, red on the, the other side. So I'm just going to unplug this little jumper here. Hold on, I'm going to need two hands to pull on that one. And there we go. We've got the CMOS battery out. Um, so let's give it a shot. All right, so I was actually able to bypass this uh, security chip and um, get into the BIOS successfully. So after having um, removed this uh, the CMOS battery, um, so originally I could get into the BIOS, but I couldn't change anything because of um, because of not having the the admin password. Um, but um, once you remove this CMOS chip. Well, the, the idea was I was hoping it would reset the password in every setting in the system, but apparently the password is kept in a chip in the system. So when you remove that CMOS chip, it basically, it, the, the system loses, its, its, uh, loses track of its date. And so when you boot up, it forces it to go into the BIOS and it, in, in um, like read write mode as an admin. And, if you, and you need the admin password for that. So basically the system is bricked and you can't boot the system even without having um, without that password. So, you know, move, removing this uh, CMOS battery basically bricked the system. And uh, I, I guess the official advice from uh, Lenovo is that, you know, if this happens, you have to replace your system board or find out what that password is somehow. Well, as it turns out, you basically, all you have to do is uh, short out these two, um, these two pins on this chip here. Now, um, I'm, I'm gonna have a little diagram. If you check the link in the description, and I'm probably gonna overlay this on the on the video, but um, it's it's this chip. Now, on different um, different revisions of this, different versions of the laptop, and I guess different apparently different revisions of the same model, will put this chip in different places. Some people report it being on like the the back of the system board. Some people say it's in different places on the on the front of the system board. In my case, um, and in the case of a video I watched by someone else, 
it was uh, right here. So if you look here, the, the keyboard goes here and the, the, the panel where you, you rest your wrists goes right here, which is uh, th this thing over here. So th this over here. So I pop that off, pop the keyboard off, and right beneath the keyboard, um, right, right in this area here, there is a little, um, so th there's a chip right here. And uh, this chip you're, you're going to, now if it happens to be oriented differently for you, it might be different pins, but as it turned out, it was the, the first on the bottom side of the chip, it was those first two, let me, let me shine my, I don't think I need a flashlight yet, that doesn't even help, but the barely helps. Um, yeah, those first two pins on the bottom, so, so going from left to right, the first two pins on the bottom of that chip, you have to short them out. Basically touch them together with a screwdriver or with uh, tweezers or, or something metal. So I ended up using tweezers. I fiddled, fiddled around with it a lot using these thinner tweezers and um, I had no luck. Like I, I tried shorting out some of the other pins and had, had it come up with different error messages and touching some of them caused the system to just power off immediately. But I fiddled, I couldn't get them um, I tried touching it. It wouldn't. It wouldn't short to short it out, and it wouldn't um, get me past the password. And I tried it at different stages. Like I would touch it, and then start the system. Start the system, and then touch it. Start it while the system is up. Um, all different combinations. And I tried it with different pins, just cut, which is, I guess, risky. But I mean, I don't care at this point. I just want to see if I can get it to work. And if I fry the system, so be it. But um, as it turns out. Um, I, I played with this for way too long, but eventually I, I ended up using this this uh, pair of tweezers with a slightly bigger um, end on it, and um, I touched those two pins, and I guess this just makes better contact. It's either that, it's either that it makes better contact, or it's just the fact that uh, it's just the timing. I also think there's a good chance it's just the timing. Like I, I basically, um, so you plug the system in, and then you hit the power button, then immediately after you hit the power button, you uh, you touch those two those two uh, pins together, so you can't wait too long, and you also can't do it too early. Like you can't touch the two pins before you hit the power button. So right after you hit the power button, you have to really quickly touch those two pins together and make sure you have good contact, and that will bypass the the password. That will bypass the uh, BIOS password on this. Um, I think that's what did it. So I played around with it wrong. Maybe I accidentally touched something else, which is really what did it. But it's supposed to be touching those two pins together. That's supposed to be what will bypass it. And I, it seems like that's what actually worked for me. So I think I just wasn't timing it right or wasn't making good contact with the pins. I, I think that was my problem initially and why I had to mess around with all the other pins. But eventually I got it working and I am now in the BIOS. So I'm going to proceed to try to uh, change the boot device and boot off a USB disk to install Kali Linux on this thing. And I'll see if I have a similar issue with the other one. I have two laptops exactly the same. Well, not exactly the same. One has a bigger hard drive than the other, but I, I basically have two you know, Lenovo ThinkPad R61s. So I'm, I'm gonna try the other one out and see if I have run into the same issue with that. But that that's it, this was a pretty neat problem and in, um, got a lot of satisfaction out of solving that. That was pretty cool. Being able to like touch two pins together on a on a chip on a live running laptop. That was that was pretty cool. So hopefully someone finds this useful.